Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is uh, the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for, for Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. We had uh, the first day of, uh, the, first day of the uh, new option cycle, and it was, also the, uh, it was also kind of a quasi-holiday because a lot of the uh, big European markets as well as uh, major European banks were closed for the uh, Easter holiday. So we had a very, very late volume for the most part and uh, not a lot of features as far as uh, volume bumps go. The uh, market internals were fairly benign. The trend was about 1.08. The advanced declines were slightly positive, but, but, nothing, but nothing too great. So you know, all in all, just kind of a very quiet start to the, uh, to the new option cycle after, uh, after wrapping up uh, the previous one with a little bit of action. Um, so let's move on and take a look at the uh, major futures charts and see what they have to tell us. On quiet days like this, where it's kind of measuring, I like to look at the Dow Jones just to see uh, see if there's any activity there. Just because a lot of times that tells a little better, a little better, a uh, little better tail because it's less volatile. You can see, look at the look at the closes here. We're all just kind of wound up in the last in the last four or five days, all in this in this last little cluster here. We had this pivot to the upside. We've got one, two, three, four days here. We've essentially done nothing. We didn't even close outside of the previous range. We did make a new high close on this little move, but it, it really doesn't do much to move the needle. Hovering above the 8 ace level, we're above the uh, the 10 and the 50 period moving average, and then of course still above the 200. So right now we're still we're still positive, but with a, with a lateral 13 in place on the uh, on the chart. Moving up to the next most volatile, here's the here's the ES chart. Somewhat of a similar pattern with a little better close today. You can see how that little extra volatility got us up to close above the previous day's range. That 8 ace level at 1875 could definitely come into play if we, uh, if we do nudge higher again tomorrow. And of course, if we roll to the downside, we've got a, a triple layer here. We've got the lows from the previous three days. And we also have the 10-period uh, the moving average coinciding with the, uh, the 50. So this area around uh, around. 1343 or so, 1344 is going to be pretty pretty strong to the downside. Moving on to the uh, Nasdaq futures, the more volatile of them, you can see that we did did uh, expand the range even a little bit more than the broad market. See, so you see how the, the the benign volatility just really can be seen going from the Dow to the ES to the Nasdaq. So the Nasdaq's more volatile, walked up just a little bit more. But essentially, if you go back to the Dow Jones chart. Really, not too much has happened to move the needle here. We did continue to the upside. If we do push higher here, the 4 ace level is definitely going to come into play, and then perhaps the uh, the 50 to the downside. Not a lot of support to be had. There's the 2 ace level will be in play. It's a uh, it's a, one of the bigger gam levels, much more important than 3 ace or 1 eighth. And then below that, the 0 ace level at 34, 37, 50 comes into play. This is probably a good time to take a look at the uh, intermarkets in the relationships. Here's the uh, Here's the relationship between the Dow and the, and, I'm sorry, the NDX and the S&P. NDX is on the rise a little bit right now, starting to bump up here a little bit. You can see we got right down to the midpoint of this regression channel, where we found some support, starting to curl back up here. Need to see, uh, need to see the, uh, the the Nasdaq stop stop losing relative weakness. It doesn't really matter if we kind of hold here, as long as the uh, as long as the uh, heavyweights uh, for the late cycle stuff are starting to do the work in the uh, in the Dow Jones and the in the S and P. That definitely was present today. So if this is still kind of hanging in there, that's actually okay for the market. We haven't looked at the uh, OSX versus oil futures in a while. Oil services here in red. The OSX, the uh, oil futures themselves are in the blue. You can see we have this 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 pretty pretty good drop here in the uh, in the oil futures, but the uh, oil services remain fairly strong and didn't really buckle that much. You can see the low here in the oil services and this low here in the in the oil futures themselves. Oil futures just just tanked to the downside, but the oil services kept chugging along here and had a pretty steady bid under them. When that condition is present, we expect the oil futures to recover and join the trend with the uh, oil services since the OSX, the the actual stocks that produce the oil tend to lead oil futures themselves. Definitely saw that here. The oil, the OSX broke out to a new high today. The uh, oil futures were down a little bit today, but as long as the oil services remain positive, expect the oil futures themselves to be fairly, uh, fairly well uh, bid for. Here's a look at our multi-sector daily chart. Saw a pretty good bounce today in the socks. That's the blue line. The uh, 
The banks didn't do too much, but that's okay as long as the oil services are, are performing, which they did. BTK did bounce back up today. We're uh, actually on the cusp of a, of a pretty decent looking uh, turn in a couple of the individual stocks. Maybe not so much for the uh, actual average themselves, but definitely keep an eye on the uh, on the uh, BTK biotechnology components. Some of those are actually looking like they want to turn. This is the last day that we're only only going to be looking only going to be looking at this chart. What I'm going to add on is I'm going to add on the uh, the Dow Jones transports and also the OSX because we're kind of at that point in the cycle now where they're going to become more and more important. And so we're going to want to see what their relationship is now that we're transitioning away from uh, from the SOX and the uh, and the banking index being being the uh, leader for the S and P. We're well well past that, and and certainly the uh, the corrective activity that we've seen in the last couple of weeks has has given a lot of evidence to that. Okay, here's a look at the uh, multi multi uh, multi sector watch list drug index. By far the top gun, but the BTK had a nice snapback here up in second place. The hardware was also pretty uh, pretty strong. These are mostly snapbacks from oversold conditions. Oil services near the top top of the list, which you want to see. Dow Jones Transports also outperformed the broad market by by a good amount, which is what you want to see. The utility index was uh, underperforming the uh, averages, and the XAU was real real weak, and that's fine. What we need to see is we need to see that. Uh, the late cycle stuff continue to push along here and uh, influence the market positively. All right, so here's a look at the OSX. Definitely positive day. We had a nice long scalp today in Halliburton. Um, definitely keep an eye on this chart and uh, the components are starting to get overbought here. We're, we're at uh, plus one ace right now, uh, basically uh, taking out this uh, this uh, risk level from this exhaustion warning, which was fairly flat. This plus two ways level could definitely be in play because we're only four bars up now in this startup phase to the upside. So we could easily uh, get to this two ways level before we get into any kind of trouble with the uh, with the uh, bar camp. But keep in mind though that we are still in the overbought territory. We might want to pull down, play with this eight ace level, and that's fine. Let some of these things, the overbought conditions, work work themselves out. Look for continuations to the upside, and if uh, we're starting to see some. Uh, some toppiness in some of these uh, some of these individual names where, where, where we're getting bar counts. Then we can start looking at those for uh, short-term trades to the downside. But uh, we definitely want to see this uh, this sector especially continue to the upside here. You see the MACD is still positive and not not tremendously overbought just yet. Now the Dow Jones transports are the other one that we need to see really go. We've got our eight bar up here. We're really close to getting to uh, 13 bars up. Just missed it today. We could have a double top here. But even if we do that and uh, have that 13 print, we very well could have this 8 ace level in play before we get to the risk level, and I would expect that that might be the case. So definitely be prepared for that. If not, we could wind up just uh, just uh, retreating back into kind of this sloppy trading range. And if the transports and the, and the oil services feel the effects of the 13 from the tra from the uh, from the seeker on the transports and the overbought uh, condition on the GAN box for the oil services, that could be a real problem for the broad market. So if these guys run out of gas now, that would be the place where the uh, market could become uh, terminally exhausted and need to actually enter a true corrective phase. So we really need to focus on the transports in the OSX for this week. All right, finally, here's a look at the BTK index. The BTK index is trying to pivot to the upside here. Got a little bit of a close above the 10 EMA. Was it impressive? No, definitely not. But got to look at this 4 ace level at uh, at uh, 2,500, and this could be an area where they want to pivot. It could get a little real relief bounce. Don't forget, we just came in to interact and test the 200 DMA, never closed below it. Use that for support, so we'd easily push through this 4 ace level and get up maybe the 6 ace level, where we're going to see the uh, 50 DMA coming in. And we're also on the cusp here of a uh, of a positive MACD cross in the BTK, and they could easily come back for these shares. And these uh, these are high beta names uh, that we like to trade, and these names can move really well and, and provide really nice uh, really nice setups for us. So let's definitely be on top of this and be prepared for this. If the market does continue to the upside, I would definitely keep the BTK index on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, watch list for sure. All the different components: the Biogen, Amgen, Celgene, all of them. Make sure you know where those charts are and if there's any if there's going to be any setups in there. So. 
So don't want to miss those if we uh, st start to turn to the upside here. There's plenty of room to go to the upside, especially with a positive MACD cross behind us. That could be powerful stuff. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.